The fairy you saved in the ruins appears before you. She seems to want to take you somewhere. The fairy leads you into an old, ivy-covered tower. You find yourself in a cluttered room that seems to be a laboratory. Judging by the stratification of dust, much time has passed since anyone last entered this room. Letters amidst the shambles indicate that a magician named Lucane lives here. You find a message he penned on the desk. Lucane wrote that he was off to see a magician friend named Wallace in the underground labyrinth. The fairy uses various interpretive gestures to indicate that she wants you to find him. You accept her job request. You head to Wallace's underground labyrinth to look for the magician, Lucane. This underground labyrinth is said to have been made in a single night with powerful magic. It is a dangerous place, replete with traps. Huh? It bars entry to all who need it.
Out of the blue, a mouse darts out and leaps onto your palm. The rodent claims to be the apprentice of Wallace the Magician. He says he was tasked with caring for the laboratory while Wallace was gone, but it is beset by malevolent magic users. When you ask about Lucane, the apprentice answers that his master's friend went into the labyrinth and hasn't returned. Your quest to find Lucane is delayed as you attempt to liberate the lab for Ricky the Magician's apprentice. The door to the laboratory is through this hall. Oh, yes. Voila! Because the laboratory was being misused, some of the experiments housed within have now run out. There's been a population explosion of mutated beings that spread their spores around. The labyrinth is overrun by fungi.
Odin. to belong to Lucane in the depths of the labyrinth. The tattered raiments and jewelry leave no doubt that the corpse is indeed Lucane's. You bring back the bones of the magician Lucane. You found Lucane, 
but he was dead. You imagine the fairy will be overcome with grief, but you need to return to her. When you enter the laboratory, the fairy frantically flits around you, as if it senses your uneasiness. Upon seeing Lucane's bones, the fairy enters into a panic. She begins tugging at your arm to get you to leave the tower. The fairy is apparently attempting to lead you somewhere. You collect Lucane's bones and follow her. As you enter, a kindly voice echoes from the back. You seem to be in need of help, a monk says, and approaches you. You nervously hand the monk the bones of Lucane. Allow this heart to beat again. Quench their thirst. Lead the wandering soul back. Reverse death. And awaken them. The prayer reaches the goddess, and the pile of bones is once again given flesh. Lucane, shocked to find himself alive, thanks you profusely. He tells you to visit him at his laboratory and leaves. The resurrected magician has returned to the old tower in town. You decide to see him to ask more details. The magician Lucane is waiting for you in the laboratory of the old tower. It seems that dying had an adverse effect on his short-term memory. Lucane can't remember why he went to meet Wallace. Lucane is researching magic called runes, which are closely tied to spirits and fairies. Lucane introduces his fairy friend to you. Her name is Tiki. She left the fairy forest due to her strong curiosity. He thanks you again for saving him and allowing him to enjoy life's rich pageant. He displays his magic trinkets. Lucane says he'd be happy to sell you these items at a fraction of the normal price and answer any questions you have. What will you ask? The magician Wallace was an old friend of Lucane's. He was known as a great magician. He sealed that group, or myopia of Cyclopes, in a labyrinth and saved the land. He also mentored young magicians in his tower. He was also the king's trusted advisor. And Lucane trails off. It seems that Lucane's memory has failed him again. Before you realize it, Tiki is following you around. She seems to have taken a liking to you. She will accompany you on your adventures henceforth. Fairies are known to be adept at finding hidden things.